Most Somalis obtain water from boreholes and shallow wells. Shallow wells are typically located within settlements where water quality is often polluted due to nearby latrines seeping their contents into the groundwater. This causes frequent outbreaks of water-related diseases such as cholera and diarrhea. Disinfection refers to selective destruction of disease-causing organisms in the water supply. The most widely used process to disinfest water is chlorination. Other processes include ultraviolet or UV light, ozonation or reverse osmosis. Several tests and pre-treatments have to be conducted to ensure effective chlorination such as turbidity and pH tests. The following videos will take you through the different steps of the chlorination process. Turbidity of water is caused by suspended particles, primarily of clay, silt, organic matter and microorganisms. Whilst turbidity is not harmful by itself, Excess turbidity hinders the efficiency of the disinfection process. The test for turbidity is a physical test that is done with an instrument called turbidimeter or nephliometer. The objective of the test is to determine the amount of suspended materials in the water. The water standards establishes that the limit turbidity for an efficient water treatment should be less than 5 NTU with a tolerance of up to 20 NTU in emergencies. To conduct the turbidity test, the following equipment and materials are necessary. One, a turbidimeter or nephliometer that is usually found in the Delagua kit or the Wagtec kit. Two, one beaker or jar with raw water. Three, white paper. Four, raw water from the source. The technician will now explain the different steps to conduct the turbidity test. The procedure for conducting turbidity test is as follows. First, you take the turbidimeter, the turbidimeter, which I told you, as I told you before, it is in three pieces. You join it into one piece. The second uh, step is you need to place the white paper, this white paper, below the tablet meter so that it is just next to the cross. This cross, as I showed you, this is the indicator where you have to observe. Then, take the sample of water which you are going to tab determine the turbidity. Take that sample. Then fill in that water in the tablet meter as you observe the cross until it is it disappears. That's that you cannot see the cross. And that you can have a look at the cross again to ensure that it has disappeared. No, I can see it a bit, sorry. It has not disappeared completely. I can see it a bit. It's gone. It just disappeared. And then you look at your measurement. And then it, here it is seen that the measurement is between 20 and 25. It's just very close to 20. We can say that is our measurement of turbidity. So you take your reading 
based on the closeness of which figure is close to the other one. So for this purpose, for our purpose here, it is very much close to 20 and we can say our NTU, the NTU measurements of turbidity here, the result is 20. The technician has found that the water is too turbid, 20 NTU. This means that the water treatment might not be efficient. We shall then need to undertake pre-treatment such as sedimentation, flocculation or filtration to reduce the level of turbidity to less than 5 NTU before any disinfection treatment. After conducting the turbidity test, if the level of turbidity is still more than 5 NTU, or to 20 in emergencies, you should undertake a pre-treatment procedure to reduce the turbidity and then to ensure effective chlorination. The next experiment, called a jar test, helps us to choose the adequate amount of coagulant required to settle sediments in water through the process of coagulation or flocculation. Coagulation is the chemical process of bringing the particles together by using a coagulant, whilst flocculation is the formation of larger or heavier particles called flocks following the coagulation. Properly formed flocks will settle out of water quickly in the sedimentation basin, removing the majority of the water's turbidity. In an emergency situation, the most commonly used chemical for coagulation is aluminium sulfate, or ALSO3. In case aluminium sulfate is not available in the field, another natural coagulant that is commonly used is the Moringa seeds. It's however mainly used at a household level. One seed can treat up to 4 litres of raw water depending on its turbidity. To conduct the turbidity test, the following equipment and materials are necessary. 1. 6 1 litre glass beakers. 2. 1 electronic weight balance. 3. Coagulant products such as aluminium sulphate, ALSO3, powder at a concentration of 100%. 4. A watch or a clock, 5. A turbidity meter, 6. Surgeon's gloves, 7. One spoon, 8. A raw sample from the source, 9. Distilled water. The first step is to wear gloves, protective gloves, as you can see. I've already put on gloves for protection. Second step is to prepare or to fill in one liter of water, clean water. And then measure 10 grams of aluminum sulfate. And slowly I put the aluminum sulfate powder. Okay, then after that, cover the can and then shake it like one minute to make sure that the solution is made for thorough mixing. The third step is filling these beakers with one liter of water from the source. That's one liter of water raw water to be treated. Fill all the rest the same and then we go to the next step. Once the beakers are filled with one liter water, we need now to dose this, uh, the different beakers, different dosages of aluminium sulfate solution. The first beaker we are going to dose one milliliter of aluminium sulfate solution. The second beaker will dose it with three milliliter. Third beaker we dose 
five milliliter. The fourth beaker, we dose it with seven milliliter. The fifth beaker, we dose it with nine milliliter of aluminum sulfate solution. And the last one, that is the sixth beaker, we dose it with 11 milliliter of aluminum sulfate solution. The next step is to stir the six beakers for one minute rigorously. One minute rigorously. Like this. Once we stir for one minute, the next step is to stir slowly for 15 minutes to ensure that the mixture, the, the aluminum sulfide mixes with the suspended materials in a process called flocculation. After stirring for 15 minutes, allow for a period of between 30 to 60 minutes to allow contact time uh, of aluminum sulfide and the suspended materials to come together and settle down. We have now waited for 60 minutes. The next step will be to determine the stability of each solution of all the six speakers. Procedure is as follows. We use the tablet meter, hold gently the beaker for the first dose of and then pour the water as you watch the cross down there to just determine which level of the water will be and the cross disappears. Remember to hold the beaker gently so that you don't disturb the settled uh, sentiments. The cross has just disappeared and the turbidity of water is still 40. It's 40. That means nothing much has changed in the for the first beaker. Then we will repeat the process in all the remaining beakers, determining the turbidity for all the six beakers. Now we have determined the turbidity of all the six beakers. As you can see, the first beaker, the turbidity is 40 NTU, the second is 8, the third is 6, the fourth is 5, less than 5, the sixth is 7, and the last one is 8. You can see the turbidity test, from the turbidity test, the level of NTU goes down up to the optimum level and then up again. That the level at the point where it is minimum, that is the optimum level of dosage. That is the optimum dosage which is required. What happens is, if you have less as aluminum sulfate in, in, the, in the water, the formation of flux is far much less. If you have more in the, in the water solution, it means that the aluminum sulfate interferes with the settlement process. And that means the settlement does not take place as required. The technician has found that the optimum amount of aluminium sulphate at a concentration of 1% is 7 mL per litre. Let us now calculate the quantity of 100% aluminium sulphate powder needed to pre-treat a water tank of 15 cubic metres. First, we must calculate the amount needed for 1 litre. To obtain the stock solution of 1% aluminium sulphate, we used 10 GL, which is the equivalent to 10,000 milligrams, or 1,000 millilitres. To obtain 7 mil, we used cross-multiplication as follows. 7 mil times 10,000 milligrams equals 1,000 millilitres. The amount of 100% aluminium sulphate powder needed for 1 litre is then 70 milligrams. 
Now we need to convert our 15 cubic meters into liters. If one cubic meter is equal to 1000 liters, then we can work out that 15 cubic meters is equal to 15,000 liters. Then, if for one liter of water we need 70 milligrams of 100% ALSU powder, how much would we need for 15,000 liters? By simple multiplication, we can work out that we would need 1,050,000 milligrams, or which is the equivalent to 1,050 grams or 1.05 kilograms of 100% aluminium sulfate powder. We now have the amount of aluminium sulfate needed to reduce the turbidity of our 15 cubic meter tank. However, to ensure the effectiveness of the process, the pH of the water should be between 6 to 7, which is the pH we are looking for for water consumption. We will then need to conduct a pH test with our water sample. Before undertaking any water treatment, we need to make sure of the level of pH in the water, which is the alkalinity or acidity, is within an acceptable range for consumption, which should be between 6.8 and 7.2. There are different ways to measure the pH. One, the easiest and cheapest is to measure the pH with litmus paper. Two, the pH can also be measured using a pool tester. Three, however, the best accurate methods is with an electronic pH meter, which is available in laboratories but difficult to find in the field. To conduct the pH test using the litmus paper, the following equipment and materials are necessary. 1. Litmus paper 2. Surgeon's gloves 3. Water samples from the source The technician will take you through the different steps to conduct the pH test using litmus paper. Start with, you need to put the gloves for protection purpose. The first procedure is you get the beaker where you are going to put water for uh, analysis for testing for pH, then collect some water from the bucket, put some water at least to a level which you can see, easily seen. Then just put the beaker there, and then for today, we are going to use the universal uh, litmus paper analysis then just get a piece of it from just pull it slowly then put this in the water sample you have taken and then you wait for two one to two minutes one minute is over and the litmus paper has changed color and we need to compare the color of the litmus paper to the universal chart which is indicated here and looking at the color of the litmus paper and the chart the range is within six seven just close to seven it is actually near green and that means water is within the neutral range and does not require a pre-treatment. To conduct the pH test using the pool tester, the following equipment and materials are necessary. One, a pool tester including phenol red tablets or liquid. Two, surgeon gloves. Three, a water sample from the source. The technician will take you through the different steps to conduct the pH test using a pool tester. First is remove the tubes here for conducting the pH test. Open the top 
of the chlorine test tube. Collect the water sample already I've done. Fill in this water sample to the level up to it's a marked it's marked up to top about 25 centimeters from the top. Then from the kit take solution four which is here and it is the chlorine neutralizer and put one drop one drop of chlorine neutralizer into the water sample one drop this is it one drop one drop is there you already have one drop and then place water down again on the table cover the chemical place it back to the uh, and then take solution two this solution two this is actually the ph tester ph tester and the ph tester you put five drops into the same water sample five drops one two three four five five drops then cover place it back then take the cover for the test tube and then put it back and then mix the solution you mix mix it until this this is fully mixed well done and then you look at the gauge of pH gauge and compare the color of water with the gauge which is written here and as you can see that gauge is the water the color is within the seven scale of seven which is neutral scale neutral point that means this water does not need any pre-treatment before it is any further treatment is done the experiment showed a pH level of 7.2, which is within the neutral range. In case you have a level of pH lower than 6.8, you must undertake pre-treatment of the water. Chlorination is the most common procedure to disinfect water at the water source and storage level. Before undertaking any chlorination process, it's important to calculate the adequate amount of chlorine to be added because if there's not enough chlorine in the water, the microorganisms won't be killed and the water will remain contaminated. If there's too much chlorine, the users may not be able to drink it as it will taste very bad and it will be of a higher cost and a waste of money and may cause digestive troubles to the users. The free residual chlorine test gives us an indication of the amount of chlorine already present in our water sample and hence allows us to calculate the quantity required. Chlorine used in the disinfection process normally is in the form of hypochlorite, or free chlorine gas. The most commonly used product in water treatment at water source and storage level in the humanitarian sector is calcium hypochlorite, or CaOCl2, also known as HTH, with a concentration of 65 to 70%. The 12% sodium hypochlorite, or NaOCl, especially in forms of tablets, is also used. To conduct the free chlorine test, the following equipment and materials are necessary. 1. Six containers in which the volume can be measured of pre-treated water 
with a level of turbidity less than 5 NUT and pH between 6 to 7.2. 2. One pool tester. 3. Calcium hypochlorite at a concentration of 65 to 70 percent, also called HTH. 4. One electronic weight balance. If you don't have an electronic balance, you can use a tablespoon that contains approximately 15 grams of the powder. 5. One watch or a clock. 6. Surgeon's gloves or latex gloves. 7. Distilled water. The technician will take you through the different steps to conduct free residual chlorine test. To conduct chlorine test, first it's necessary to create a solution of 1% HTH powder that we usually use. The 1% solution means creating a solution that uh, has a concentration of 1% chlorine. The first thing to do is to know the concentration of HTH that we are using by checking the manufacturer sticker on the product. We will use for this test we are going to use HTH that has a concentration of 65% according to the manufacturer. The HTH will, should be stored in a dry cool place not exposed to sunlight. To produce a 1% solution of HTH or a 65 concentration of chlorine, the calculation is as below. 100% solution is equivalent to uh, 10 grams of 1 liter solution. It is saying that, it's like saying that we need 10 grams of 100 over 100 of 100% solution. For 65% solution, the concentration being less, more product will be needed. Therefore, to make 1% solution of HDH of 65% uh, uh, concentration, we need X milligrams or grams of HTH. X equals to 10 grams of 100 over 65 percent solution which gives a value of 15 grams to be used for preparation of the solution. Thereafter, we close, we cover the jerry can and shake until the solution, the, the granules of calcium hypochlorite completely dissolves in the water. Now it's already dissolved and is ready for use for various dosages in this 15 liters water bucket. Now we are going to dose various dosages of chlorine in all these six buckets. First of all, you get the chlorine solution, that is uh, the 1% solution, put, it, put a bit of it in a beaker, like that, so that you can use the syringe to get the quantity you require. The first quantity which is required is one milliliter. The second one is 1.5. The third one is two. Two milliliters. The fourth one is 2.5. The fifth one is three milliliters. 
And the final one is four. The next step will be to stir this uh, water for one minute so that we ensure that it is fully well mixed. Now we have allowed 30 minutes contact time between water and the chlorine which we have dosed in all these six buckets. We are ready now to go to the next step of conducting free residual chlorine and then what we are going to use is the pool tester. This is the uh, equipment or the tester we are going to use to conduct the free residual chlorine. First, you take the DBT tablet, remove one tablet from the DBT pack, put it inside the test tube, then crush it. After crushing, fill this with water from the first bucket. Fill the test tube with the water from the first bucket. Then you cover it, cover it. Then we need to shake the solution so that it is homogeneous. And then make sure that it is well shaked. Check the results. The residual chlorine is within that range. As you can see here, the range of free residual chlorine ranges from 3.0 to 0.1. If the range is above, it is within 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 point, up to 0 0.5, that is the range which is recommended for proper chlorine dosage. Now we repeat the same process for the remaining five buckets and take the measurements. The technician has measured the free residual chlorine for each bucket and the measurements are as follows. First bucket, 0 0.1 milligrams per liter. Second bucket, 0 0.2 milligrams per liter. Third bucket, 0 0.3 milligrams per liter. Fourth bucket, 0 0.9 milligrams per liter. Fifth bucket, 1.33 milligrams per liter. Sixth bucket, 1.67 milligrams per liter. As per WHO recommendation for drinking water, we have to deliver water that contains 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 milligrams per liter of free chlorine. The technician has found that the safest result, treatment versus economics, is to take the bucket number three with 0 0.3 milligrams per litre of residual chlorine. That means that for each 15 litres of water treated, we would need 2 millilitres of 1% HTH base solution. Let's then calculate how many grams of 65% HTH is needed for a water tank of 15 cubic metres. First we need to calculate the amount of 1% HTH solution for 1 litre by dividing 2 millilitres 
of 1% solution by 15 litres of water to be treated. This is equal to 0.13 ml per litre of water. Then we have to calculate the quantity in grams of 65% HTH needed for 0.13 ml or millilitres. If to obtain our stock solution of 1% HTH we used 15 grams per litre which is equivalent to 15,000 milligrams or 1,000 millilitres to obtain the quantity needed for 0.13 mil millilitres we used cross multiplication as follows x equals 0.13 millilitres times 15,000 milligrams divided by 1,000 millilitres x equals 1.95 milligrams the amount of 65 percent HTH power needed for one liter is then 1.95 milligrams finally if our tank has 15 cubic meters which is the equivalent to 15,000 liters we use simple multiplication as follows x equals 1.95 milligrams times 15,000 liters. The amount of 65% HTH required to treat our water tank of 15 cubic meters is then 29,250 milligrams or which is the equivalent of 29.2 grams. The technician has explained the required procedures to efficiently treat large amounts of water at the storage level like a mini water supply system or any water storage tank it ensures that we deliver water which is safe for drinking to all the communities however water needs to be protected across the whole water supply process transportation and storage in households at a household level other water purification processes can be used like aqua tabs, different kind of filters. But this is another story.